I'm Squadaloo, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get Mario Kart Wii running in Dolphin VR with full 3D 60 degrees of freedom virtual reality. Before we get into it, however, I'd like to give a big thank you to VHS Productions for his tutorial on getting the game running initially. This tutorial is actually intended as a follow-up to that video, so if you haven't begun the process of getting Mario Kart Wii up and running in Dolphin VR at all, go ahead and pause this tutorial now and head over to his video using the link in the comments. Uh, it is quite lengthy, so if you need a more condensed version, Barefoot Gaming also has a video tutorial on the initial setup. With that being said, the setup in these tutorials is nice, but it has a major glaring flaw. When in the headset, you'll notice the entire world seems a little flat. Rather than being in the game, it feels more like you're sitting inside a spherical screen the game is being projected onto. In addition to that, it feels like there's only three degrees of freedom head movement. In fact, in this footage, I'm actually standing up and walking around the room, but it looks as if my head hasn't moved at all. The main focus of this tutorial will be fixing this problem, to get you into the world of Mario Kart rather than looking at it in a big dome. First things first, however. At least on my machine, I ran into major issues with a flashing black strobe effect in races after making my way through the original tutorial. To fix it, I ended up having to go into the graphics settings in Dolphin VR, then changing the back end to Direct 3D 11. Next, to fix some issues with the HUD during races flickering, I went to Hacks and disabled Fast Depth Calculation, and unchecked Disable under EFB Copies. Note that unchecking Fast Depth Calculation can result in a performance hit on your GPUs. Be careful. Next, we're going to move over to improving the VR experience itself. Open up the Dolphin Global VR set. On the VR tab, we're going to reduce free look sensitivity to 0.25. I also checked to pull up 60 FPS to 90 FPS because I opted not to enable CPU clock override in Dolphin as I found it taxed my processor a little bit too hard. Experiment with both overclocking and this setting to see what gets you the smoothest performance on your machine. Next, let's move over to the game itself. Right-click the game, and click Properties, then go to the VR tab. First, we're going to set units per meter to 90 game units. This helps determine the scale of the game in the headset. The higher the value, the smaller the game world gets relative to the real world. This is ultimately why we are getting that 3 degrees of freedom effect with the settings from the original tutorial. Our head was so small relative to the in-game world that I was actually moving in the in-game world when I was standing up and walking around. It's just that I was so small, it didn't even look like it. I got a value of 90 by using the free camera to compare my height to Daisy and Peach, since I figured they're the closest to normal humans in the Mario world. But if you feel like it's too big or too small, this is the value to adjust. Next, since we've rescaled the game world, we'll need to rescale the HUD too. I have to set it to 36 meters away. I left HUD thickness at 2.9, HUD 3D closer at 1, and camera forward at negative 10.4 meters. Uh, everything but that first setting there are the same as the original tutorial, and honestly, I don't know what any of these settings really do, except for that first one, but they seem fine as is. For camera pitch, we'll set it to 15 degrees up. By default, the camera in Mario Kart is angled slightly down to get a view of both your racer and the track ahead. So, by angling it up another 15 degrees, it should roughly put the world on a level plane. That should take care of all of our largest issues, but before we leave this screen, I want to address AR codes. Ideally, we'd want to check Disable Pulling Outside Outside Camera View. Honestly, I'm not sure where this page filled from, as I did not originally add this code myself, so I'm not really responsible for that typo. Anywho, by default, when you physically turn around, you won't see any objects behind you, like other racers or major course obstacles. Using the rearview mirror, however, will reveal them. This is because, by default, the game doesn't really render anything that's outside of the normal Mario Kart camera range. 
Checking this will force all objects to render at all times, resulting in a more realistic VR experience. With that being said, I said ideally, because I find this is much more taxing on your hardware. I have an i7-6700 processor and a GTX 1070, which means I'm due for an upgrade, but I should note that my system is not able to handle more demanding levels like Coconut Mall or Daisy Circuit with this checked, so I've opted to leave it unchecked. As I said earlier, I didn't actually add this option to the page myself, and I also can't seem to export it, so if you don't have it, unfortunately I can't get it for you. If you happen to know this code, throw a comment down below and help out anyone watching. Oh, and one last thing. If you use those original tutorials and you're using an Xbox controller, you may have mapped the free camera hotkeys to the D-pad. The GameCube controller setup for Mario Kart Wii uses the D-pad for tricks and wheelies. Personally, I just mapped the GameCube D-pad up direction to clicking in on the left stick so I don't have to take my thumb off the steering wheel while I'm racing, so to speak. With everything set up, let's hop over to the game and check out the difference. Alright, we're hopping over to the game now. Um, and we've switched from pre-recorded Squadaloo to post-recording Squadaloo because it didn't actually capture any audio. Uh, but anyways, let's hop into the menu. Um, so one of the downsides of us doing the screen pitch up 15 degrees is that the menus are pitched down. I'm looking straight forward here and you can see that's kind of like angled downward. Uh, but it's not too bad. You can, it's pretty easy to just look a little bit down and look at the menus. Uh, so I'm going to hop into a solo time trial here. Uh, Got to pick Mario with this uh, method, which kind of stinks, but you can pick any cart. But I'll pick the standard cart, since that's what I used in my original demo of the other settings. Uh, and let's just go ahead and load into Luigi Circuit. Alright, so... One downside of setting the free look sensitivity to 0.25 is, as you can see here, the camera is like barely moving, so you have to press the button a lot in order to get your head onto Mario. Uh, I know that seems frustrating, it seems odd that I would do that. Um, however, you really only have to do this once per play session. Um, as you'll see later, we kind of Basically, when you quit out of the game, uh, it'll remember where the camera was. But also, it'll let you quickly adjust your height um, between if you're switching between carts. Uh, because every cart and every bike is just a little bit different in height. Alright, so our head is now on Mario's body. Everything is looking good. And so, much like the demo, I'm going to go ahead and, and stand up and start walking around the room. Uh, just to show the full depth. Uh, any second here. There we go. Now I'm standing up and walking around. And as you can see, uh, you can, well, you can tell that I'm actually standing up and walking around because we can move away from the cart. Oh, there's my Oculus Guardian. Uh, but yeah, so that is pretty well the result of all of our changes. And makes the game uh, much more immersive. So let's go ahead and go for a drive. Uh, now you can kind of see there, uh, it's not too noticeable in the video, it's kind of a little more noticeable in VR. Uh, every time you do the little hop to a drift, uh, Mario's arms kind of reach up into your view a little bit. Uh, you can also sometimes get in your way when you do a trick. Uh, didn't really. I was trying to show it off there, <laughs> and it actually didn't happen. So, yeah. All right. So here I'm just going to show what happens when you quit the game. Uh, I know I said earlier uh, that you would only have to do that setup once, the main setup, uh, and it doesn't necessarily look like that's the case, because when you quit game, it takes you to the title screen, uh, but you don't see it. So you're tempted to hit left bumper to reset the camera, but do not do it. Uh, it is only this main title screen that is like this. If you hit the A button and go into the single player menu, uh, there it is. It's right in front of your face again, uh, so everything's fine and dandy there. Uh, now I'm just going to show uh, using a different vehicle. Uh, specifically the mock bike. As I said, 
maybe I didn't say it actually, but a lot of the different vehicles, obviously they're different heights and everything. Some work better for VR than others. Unfortunately, one of the worst ones for VR is the mock bike, uh, because it's the pretty well objectively the best medium weight vehicle in the game. Uh, it's an inside drifting bike, a lot of speed, great handling, uh, pretty broken actually. Uh, but when we hop in here, uh, well, first of all, you're going to see what, why we essentially set that uh, camera movement to 0.25. Uh, obviously, the height is a little different on the mock bike. I'm, I'm basically in Mario's crotch right now, or where his crotch would be. Kind of doesn't look like it. It looks a little more forward in the video than it was in VR. Made me laugh. But yeah, so now, because the sensitivity on the free look aim is only 0.25, we can just snap into position. Uh, you could usually do that a little more quickly than I was doing here. Then you're off. But the problem is, right there, every single time you wheelie in the mock bike, the windshield, uh, like Mario logo on the front of it, is directly right in the middle of your vision. Um, the bike is still usable. Uh, the camera also varies a little bit in height at different parts of the tracks and different tracks. Like right there, I wheelied and it wasn't really in the way. Um, so the way around that whole windshield problem is you could kind of just move your set head over to the side so you can look out the side of the windshield. Uh, it's obviously not ideal. Uh, in a weird way, it kind of makes it feel more realistic, uh, but it does make the game harder. Uh, so it's not the greatest choice, but it's definitely usable, um, which is great because the mock bike itself is great. Uh, unfortunately, using this method of getting the VR working, uh, you are limited to using Mario. Uh, if you want to use any other character, uh, I don't know the hide object codes for those. Uh, so I ended up modding the game and just completely removing Rosalina. She was my main back in the day. Uh, and that worked out fine. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to share that mod just yet because uh, it's basically almost unedited base files from the game. Uh, and... Way back when, when I tried to make a custom course for this game uh, a year later, I saw that it was taken down by Nintendo for having unedited files. So I'm not going to risk their legal team going after me, but I may make a tutorial on how to get that set up. Now, there's still a few issues this doesn't resolve. Namely, some parts of the track will cause the vehicle to obscure your view, so you may have to shift around. Uh, one of the biggest culprits of this is the first downhill section on Rainbow Road. And pretty much ever any half-pipe section is sort of blind. Mario's body itself will also obscure your view at times when you throw items or hop. However, with some practice, you can adapt to these quirks and do pretty well for yourself. I was able to clear all cups with gold medals on 150cc after not very long. Oh, and of course, this works with modded tracks. The fun doesn't have to stop with Mario Kart Wii. You can fill your game with tracks from all over Mario Kart's history, so really you can effectively play Mario Kart 7, 64, Double Dash, SNES, Super Circuit, you name it in virtual reality. If you're running into issues, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help. Thanks for watching.